Scattered across the vast expanse of China's landscape lies a forgotten piece of our history. Hundreds of massive megalithic structures, all showcasing the uses of advanced technology, hint at the existence of a large and sophisticated civilization that thrived in what is now known as China, an ancient civilization that carved enormous stone blocks weighing over 1,000 tons, constructed over 200 pyramids across vast areas, extracted thousands of tons of stone to create enormous cave networks with the help of advanced technology, and much, much more. This ancient society replete with sophisticated technology, monumental architecture, and profound knowledge vanished in the blink of an eye, most likely due to a massive global cataclysmic event. This enigmatic civilization, which predates our established historical records, challenges our understanding of human history and begs the question, what secrets lie buried beneath the ancient soil of China? Join us as we unravel the mysteries of this unknown advanced civilization, exploring the remnants of their existence and piecing together the puzzle of their sudden disappearance. The Yangshan Quarry, located in the outskirts of Nanjing, China, is a trove of archaeological anomalies that defy conventional understanding of ancient engineering. The centerpiece of this mystery is the gargantuan megalithic block estimated to weigh 16,000 tons, making it the largest known stone ever cut by human hands. To put the enormity of this block into perspective, it is over 13 times heavier than the largest known megalithic block in the world, the one at Baalbek, Lebanon, which weighs 1,200 tons. The logistics of cutting, extracting, and transporting a stone of this magnitude are staggering to consider. With our current technological capabilities, moving a 16,000-ton block would be an impossible task, no matter how many cranes and other heavy machinery we use. So the question is, what kind of technology did this ancient civilization possess to be able to transport such enormous stone blocks? And it's evident that the massive stone block at the Yangshan Quarry wasn't an isolated case. It appears that millions of tons of rock have been displaced already, leaving towering flat walls that defy traditional quarrying practices. This means that indeed whoever operated in this quarry really had the ability and technology to transport the massive blocks that were extracted. But that's not the only mystery. The methods used to cut and shape this giant stone are also a source of significant wonder. There are massive square holes at the bottom of the block, which were probably made to be used when the block was about to be lifted and transported away from the site. The precision and clarity of the quarry marks, along with the planned smooth surfaces present at the site, indicate a level of sophistication that seems far beyond the capabilities of ancient civilizations as we understand them. The presence of straight and precise grooves, along with the sheer size of the block, implies a mastery over stone that was simply impossible for any known ancient civilization of the time. Also, the erosion and weathering present on the stone block indicate that it's extremely old, probably much older than the estimated 8,000 years. It seems as if the entire site was once some kind of complex, as there are other massive structures present there. On one of those structures, we can see perfectly squared cavities carved into the rock, which is a task that would be impossible with simple bronze tools. The precision of the 90-degree angles and the intricate removal of material from these blocks perplex modern researchers. The most shocking feature of the structures was the giant knobs. Ancient megalithic sites adorned with distinctive knobs are found across various parts of the world, suggesting a shared technique or symbolic significance among prehistoric builders. In Peru, particularly in areas like Cusco, there are many megalithic stones with similar knobs. The Giza Plateau in Egypt, 
home to the famous pyramids, also features megalithic blocks with knob-like protrusions. The Menkaur Pyramid, in particular, showcases this characteristic. Mainstream historians believe these knobs were used for the lifting and positioning of stones, acting as leverage points for ropes. However, judging by the enormous scale of the blocks in Yangshan, it's clear that there was an alternative purpose behind these protrusions. But how is it possible that we can find gigantic, unfinished stone blocks in various parts of the world, all suddenly left in the middle of their extraction processes and untouched for thousands of years? We already mentioned the massive stone blocks at Baalbek, Lebanon. The Trilithon are three massive stones that form part of the podium of the Temple of Jupiter. Each stone weighs an estimated 800 tons. The true age of this gigantic megalithic platform remains a mystery to archaeologists, although many believe they are at least 9,000 years old. The ancient Phoenicians, Greeks, and Romans built their structures and temples upon the massive foundation, yet nothing of their construction matches the sheer scale and engineering prowess demonstrated by the Baalbek stones. These colossal blocks were precisely cut and placed with remarkable accuracy, and fitted together perfectly. Adjacent to these, there lies an even larger stone block, known as the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, lying in a nearby quarry. For unknown reasons, the stone was abandoned. The methods used in the transportation and assembly of these stones continue to baffle historians and engineers alike. Curiously, the Yangshan Quarry in China has the exact same tool marks that are seen on the massive stones at Baalbek. Similarly, at the ancient city of Petra in Jordan, tool marks that closely resemble those on the Yangshan blocks have been identified. Petra, dating back to as early as 7000 BC, showcases sedimentary rock formations with striations nearly identical to those in Yangshan, despite the different rock types. Comparisons with modern machinery reveal striking similarities in the striations produced by contemporary mining equipment, which suggests a level of sophistication in ancient tooling methods that parallels modern technology. This raises intriguing questions about the capabilities and technologies of ancient civilizations, suggesting that they might have possessed advanced engineering knowledge long before it was previously thought. More abandoned quarries can be found in Egypt, precisely the Aswan Quarry, in which we can find this gigantic piece of granite, which measures an impressive 137 feet in length and weighs about 1,170 tons. The surface of this massive granite slab is adorned with smooth, hollowed-out areas, giving the appearance that the granite was scooped out from the obelisk. Another gigantic, unfinished block can be found at the Minya Quarry, also known as the Tura Limestone Quarry which is also in Egypt. The block at Minya remains in situ, partially carved from the limestone bedrock, indicating that the work was abandoned before it could be completed and transported. The sudden cessation of work at these sites hints at a possible cataclysmic event that abruptly ended these monumental projects. The commonality of unfinished work at these sites has led some to theorize that a widespread ancient cataclysm might have caused the sudden abandonment of these monumental construction projects. It appears that these advanced civilizations were abruptly halted in their tracks, leaving behind these massive stone giants as silent witnesses to their erstwhile grandeur and technical prowess. In 1992, a remarkable discovery was made in Xuning, a small village nestled in the Zhejiang province in eastern China. This area, characterized by its simple farming lifestyle and the picturesque banks of the Ku River, harbored a secret beneath its mountain. The mountain, though not particularly grandiose, held an array of peculiar ponds, many of which were strikingly rectangular, 
hinting at an unusual origin. These ponds were always filled with water for as long as anyone can remember, and the local farmers regularly used the water from them. With generations of farmers using the mysterious pits without the water ever drying up, the ponds became known locally as the bottomless ponds and were steeped in curiosity that extended beyond the oldest memories of the village elders. The name was well-deserved, as the depths of these ponds seemed immeasurable. Generations of villagers had attempted to gauge their depths using long bamboo poles, yet all such efforts proved futile, as the bottom was never felt by anyone. Strangely, there was even fishes of various sizes living in the waters of the ponds. In the summer of 1992, the mystery of these ponds deepened when a villager, during a routine fishing endeavor, caught a fish of extraordinary size, over 30 pounds, from one of these seemingly modest water bodies. This catch was significant not just for its size, but for the questions it raised about the true nature of the pond's depths, where such a large fish could grow and thrive. The villager who made this remarkable catch was already known in the community for his curiosity and previous attempts to explore the depths of these ponds. Spurred by this discovery, he was determined to unravel the mystery of the bottomless ponds once and for all. To achieve this, he needed to do something drastic, drain the pond to reveal its secrets once and for all. Convincing three other villagers of the need to explore the unknown, they pooled their resources to acquire a water pump, embarking on an ambitious project that would challenge the myths of their ancestors. On June 9, 1992, they began the formidable task of draining one of the ponds. They operated the pump continuously, working day and night in shifts, driven by a shared anticipation of the unknown. After five days of non-stop pumping, the water level had receded enough to reveal the first clue that this was no ordinary pond. To their astonishment, a set of stone stairs emerged from the receding waters, descending into the depths. This initial discovery was a moment of revelation and wonder. Realizing the significance of their find, the villagers decided to intensify their efforts. They acquired four more water pumps, dramatically increasing their capacity to remove the water. For 17 days, they continued their relentless endeavor, watching as the water level slowly dropped and the full extent of their discovery began to unfold. What they found was nothing short of monumental. As the final remnants of water drained away, they stood before the entrance to a vast, man-made cave. The pond that had long intrigued and sustained their community was, in fact, a skylight or rooftop entrance to a massive ancient subterranean complex. This discovery challenged everything the villagers knew about their surroundings and history. The Long Yu Caves, as they would come to be known, represented a marvel of ancient engineering and craftsmanship. In total, there were 24 caves, Fourteen of these caves were collapsed, but those that were intact all showcased perfectly flat floors and ceilings angled at a precise 45 degrees. Although the caves were not interconnected, they were still all aligned with their floors on equal levels. In fact, there were caves that were made one next to the other, separated by as little as 20 inches or 50 centimeters. How is such precision possible? The caves themselves were enormous, with vast chambers carved out of solid rock extending deep into the earth. The precision of the carvings, the smoothness of the walls, and the sheer scale of the excavation suggested a level of sophistication and organization that was unheard of in the annals of ancient Chinese history. The cave's design was both intricate and functional with channels and pools that indicated a complex understanding of hydraulics and water management. Despite their ancient origins, the caves had withstood the test of time, remaining structurally sound and largely free of debris or sediment, which added to the mystery of their purpose and the identity of their creators. 
Another mystery is the fact that there is no evidence of smoke residue on the walls or ceilings. So how did they illuminate the caves while they were working on them? Spanning an average of 11,000 square feet each and soaring up to heights equivalent to a 10-story building, these caves collectively cover an area akin to three and a half city blocks. Estimates suggest that without advanced technology, carving these would have taken centuries, excluding the time needed for the intricate chiseling and decorative work that adorns the caves. Such a massive undertaking hints at imperial sponsorship, yet remarkably, these caves were not known to history. Despite China's long-standing tradition of meticulous record-keeping, not a single account of these caves' construction has been found in ancient texts. The caves also present a fascinating aspect in the form of the marks on their walls. These marks are notably identical and consistent. All of them are perfectly uniform and are all set at a 60-degree angle. This led many to believe they were made by some sort of advanced technology. Intriguingly, these marks closely mimic those produced by contemporary machinery, leading to comparisons with the patterns left by modern drilling equipment. When the marks in these ancient Chinese caves are compared to those made by our current drilling machines, the resemblance is uncanny, almost identical in nature. This raises the provocative question, did the creators of these caves possess technology akin to what we have today? Calculations suggest that the construction of the Long Yu Caves would have involved the removal of millions of cubic meters of rock. Given the average density of sandstone, which is around 3 tons per cubic meter, the total weight of the excavated material would be monumental, easily amounting to millions of tons. One of the things that's baffling is that there's no evidence of their construction. One of the other things that mystifies them is that there isn't any evidence of the people that built these caves. There's no villages or cemeteries or work areas. Over a million metric tons of stone were removed from those caverns, but when archeologists go around the area, they can't find any of it. Such a massive quantity of rock would have left a significant mark on the landscape creating large mounds of debris akin to the spoil heaps associated with modern mining operations. Yet, the region around the cave shows no sign of the massive piles of rock that would be expected from such extensive quarrying activity. But these 24 caves are not the only ones that possess all of these traces of advanced technology. In fact, there are thousands of similar caves all across China. If we go 100 miles north, we can find the Huashin Grottoes. Located near the Yellow River, these grottoes comprise of 36 caves, each exhibiting a sophistication and precision that echo the bewildering characteristics of the Long Yu Caves. The grottoes are an architectural marvel with their vast interiors, intricate passageways, and detailed carvings. The sheer size of the excavation project for the Huashin Grottoes is staggering. Similar to the Long Yu Caves, the amount of rock removed to create these spaces is monumental. Yet, just as mysteriously, the debris from this massive excavation is nowhere to be found. Estimations of the total volume of rock removed to form the Huashan Grottoes run into millions of cubic meters, a feat that would require a well-organized workforce and a sophisticated understanding of engineering principles. Without advanced technology, carving these would also have taken centuries till they were fully finished. Yet, no historical records or documents have been found that shed light on the construction of these grottoes, their purpose, or the civilization that built them. Many parts of these caves are still unexplored, Another place where we can see the strange machine marks is the Hygiene City Fortress. Situated atop a lofty Luas slope, this mysterious fortress is cleverly concealed by deep gorges, rendering it almost invisible to the untrained eye. Even local residents have scant knowledge of its historical origins. 
It was only through the guidance of an 80-year-old local named Hu Jun-e that the significance and design of the fortress came to light. His familiarity with the area was key in uncovering the pathways leading to this historic site. Inside the Heijin City Fortress, the land opens up, reminiscent of an ancient ark. The fortress once housed cave dwellings on its flanks. These have since eroded, leaving behind only the plateau and its gate. Upon its discovery, the initial theory proposed by historians was that the local villagers, described as primitive farmers without any means of defense, constructed the fortress as a refuge from bandits. This narrative, however, raises more questions than it answers, particularly regarding the fortress's grand architectural features, notably its 30-foot massive doorway that can be visible from a large distance. The scale and complexity of Haijun City Fortress's construction seem to contradict the idea of it being merely a hideout. Like with the previous caves we discussed, the cave in Haijun is also not formed by nature but carved meticulously from the rock. Judging by the marks, it was most likely carved with the same technology used in the other caves. Another mysterious place is the Guyaju Caves, often referred to as China's largest cliff dwelling. Discovered in 1984, this extensive cave complex comprises 117 caves and 350 chambers, sprawling across 25 acres or 100,000 square meters, making it a monumental testament to ancient ingenuity and craftsmanship. Located about 50 miles northwest of Beijing, the Guyaju Caves are hewn from solid granite, a feat that underscores the advanced technical skills and persistent labor of their creators. On the surface of the granite, we can see once again the exact same marks found in other megalithic structures. The mystery deepens with the absence of datable archaeological evidence and the lack of historical records mentioning the site, leaving experts puzzled about the origins, purpose, and the people behind this architectural marvel. The Guyaju Caves resemble a honeycomb of rock-cut chambers, organized into what appears to be two distinct village clusters. The design of these chambers, varying from square and rectangular to circular shapes, with single to multiple rooms across different levels, mirrors the cave dwellings found in regions like Turkey, Italy, and Spain. The presence of doorways, windows, king bed stoves, flues, lampstands, and storage compartments, all carved from stone, illustrates a high level of domestic sophistication. The architectural design also incorporates advanced drainage systems, highlighting the builder's understanding of environmental management and sustainable living. The structural dimensions of the caves, with consistent wall thickness and varied chamber sizes, along with the compact layout resembling multi-story buildings, demonstrate advanced architectural and engineering capabilities. The site had stone staircases, ladders, and bridges, while the roofs had chiseled slots on them to collect rainwater. The Guantanazi, or Golden Temple, the largest structure within the complex, is particularly noteworthy. Consisting of eight chambered rooms over two floors, it contains finely carved stone pillars, a large central bed, and stone furniture, leading some to believe it was the residence of the community's leader or a place of worship. Despite over three decades of protection and study since their discovery, the origins, purpose, and ultimate fate of the Guyaju Caves inhabitants remain a mystery. Archaeological estimations date the site to between 1,000 and 2,000 years ago, but these are speculative, and many believe the site is much more ancient. Judging by all of these sophisticated structures, we can agree that there was some kind of lost civilization that lived in China thousands of years ago. But are there any other clues left by this mysterious culture? In 1986,
Construction workers in the city of Guanghan stumbled upon an archaeological marvel that unveiled the remnants of a long-lost civilization. The discovery of two sacrificial pits brimming with hundreds of artifacts, including bronze and gold masks, statues, figurines, and exquisite marble and jade items, marked a significant breakthrough in the study of ancient Chinese history. Historians have since dated these findings to between 3,000 and 5,000 years ago, situating them at the dawn of civilization, a time corresponding with the ancient Sumerian and Egyptian civilizations, who are one of the first developed cultures on Earth. This lost civilization became known as the Sangxing Dui, with the name meaning the three star mounds at the ruins. In total, there were 13,000 artifacts unearthed, including over 1,200 bronze wares, 543 gold artifacts, and 565 jade objects. Among the highlights of the discovery is a bronze box with a tortoise-shaped lid, dragon head handles, and bronze ribbons. Other key finds include a bronze sacrificial altar, a giant bronze mask, and a bronze statue with a human head and a snake's body. The giant mask was incredible, measuring around four and a half feet in width, or one and a half meters, and two and a half feet in height, or 75 centimeters. Another incredible artifact was this large bronze statue, which is around nine feet tall, or more than two and a half meters. In the center of each of the figure's hands, there are cylindrical holes which indicate that it once held something. All of the bronze heads discovered among the relics are particularly striking, characterized by their oversized eyes and ears. Many believe that this civilization didn't even belong to the Chinese culture at all, as the Chinese civilizations never made any artifacts remotely similar to those. All of the mysterious artifacts were very unique and presented a sophisticated artistry. Strangely, many of them were damaged and had burn marks. This means they were either deliberately damaged, burned and then buried, or perhaps were left by a civilization that was destroyed by a cataclysmic event that led to this destruction. The masks and statues of this culture are distinct not only for their strange facial features, but also for the level of craftsmanship and complexity they exhibit. To create such detailed and exquisite artifacts, you had to be advanced in metallurgical skills, which is quite astonishing for a civilization that existed at least 5,000 years ago. Whoever these people were, their abrupt disappearance remains one of the greatest historical enigmas. But perhaps the greatest mystery of all are the pyramids that can be found all across China. The Chinese pyramids, concealed for centuries, remain relatively unknown globally, including within China. These ancient structures dot China's central plains and deserts, predominantly in Shanxi province. Yet the Chinese Communist government has imposed strict prohibitions on excavating and even visiting these ancient edifices. The local farmers living near the pyramids are encouraged to plant trees on the pyramids to conceal them. With over 200 pyramids discovered, their true purpose and origin remain a complete mystery, obscured not only by physical barriers, but also by governmental restrictions. The first recorded mention of these pyramids in the West dates back to 1912, when travel agent Fred Meyer Schroeder reported their existence noting that there are massive pyramids there. However, it wasn't until the mid-20th century that these structures gained significant attention. During World War II, American pilot James Gaussman flew over the area and captured photographs of these structures. But it wasn't until the advent of satellite imagery that we were able to understand the true scale and number of these Chinese pyramids. Similar to pyramids elsewhere in the globe, the Chinese pyramids are precisely oriented, with their corners perfectly aligned to Earth's cardinal directions. In terms of astronomy, they are slightly misaligned from the Gemini constellation, 
aligning almost exactly during the spring equinox several millennia ago. This slight deviation of 14 degrees can be explained by the axial precession of the Earth, a phenomenon where the planet's axis slowly wobbles, completing a full cycle approximately every 25,700 years. This means that these pyramids could be tens of thousands of years old. Another incredible similarity and cosmic alignment can be found when you compare the layout of the pyramid complex of Teotihuacan in Mexico with the Giza complex in Egypt and with the Xi'an pyramid complex in China. All three sites are structured in almost the exact same way and mirror the Orion constellation. How is this possible? considering all three of them are on different continents, separated by thousands of miles. Moreover, all three pyramid complexes are aligned in a near straight line, having the same orientation. Was this just a coincidence? Or is there more to the story? The remarkable presence of Chinese pyramids, particularly the colossal Great White Pyramid located in the valley of Shaanxi province is considered by many the largest pyramid in the world. It's twice the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza, with a height of around 1,000 feet or 300 meters. This means that the construction of this gigantic pyramid would require no less than 50 million tons of stone. Some have linked the extensive network of caves discussed earlier with the massive pyramids in the area. As we discussed before, the stone extracted from all of these caves was never found anywhere in the area. This situation leads to speculation that the large amount of stone taken from these caves might have been employed in building the numerous pyramids throughout China, specifically the Great White Pyramid. Additionally, the gigantic stones extracted from the Yangshan Quarry could also have been used for the construction of all of these pyramids. The most famous site in China, the Terracotta Army, is also built right at the edge of a massive pyramid that is still unexcavated. Discovered in 1974 by local farmers digging a well, the Terracotta Army encompasses more than 8,000 soldiers, along with chariots, horses, officials, acrobats, strongmen, and musicians, each with unique facial features and expressions, suggesting they were modeled after real individuals. The figures are life-sized and were originally painted, although much of the paint has flaked away over the centuries. The Terracotta Army was part of a larger necropolis designed to mirror the urban plain of the capital city and serve to protect the Emperor Qin Shi Huang in the afterlife. Qin Shi Huang is the first emperor of China who founded the Qin Dynasty. He was a monumental figure in Chinese history, known for his conquests that united China, the construction of the Great Wall, and the standardization of the monetary and legal systems. Entombed for over 2,000 years, the Terracotta Army form a massive underground mausoleum, the construction of which involves 700,000 workers and artisans over several decades. The site was a four-layered subterranean city, at the center of which lies one of China's greatest mysteries, the emperor's burial mound, which has not yet been excavated due to high levels of mercury. Archaeologists believe that beneath this mound lies a chamber with Qin Shi Huang's remains, surrounded by a miniature cosmic model. The tomb is thought to replicate the universe, with the ceiling representing the night sky, adorned with pearls as stars, and the ground mimicking the landscape of China, where flowing mercury symbolizes the rivers. Considering how fascinating this site is, just imagine what secrets could be found inside the pyramid adjacent to it, which is most likely thousands of years older than the Terracotta Army itself. Within the pyramid is a lake of mercury, that there are mechanical devices in there which will fire arrows at you if you go in. That wow. There's a whole story about how, how intensely protected it is, and up to this day it's not been excavated.
The mystery surrounding the Chinese pyramids extends far back in history, with documented references to these structures dating back to the early 17th century. Notably, a Roman Jesuit whose observations have been preserved in various historical accounts penned some of the earliest Western descriptions of these remarkable constructions. However, it was Joseph de Guigne, a renowned French Orientalist and Sinologist in the 18th century, who significantly contributed to the discourse with his provocative theory. In his 1785 publication, an essay in which we prove the Chinese are an Egyptian colony, de Guigne posited a direct connection between the Chinese and ancient Egyptians, largely based on the presence of pyramid-like structures in China, along with certain cultural and linguistic similarities, indicating a possible historical link between the two civilizations. But the architectural features of these structures do not resemble just the pyramids in Egypt, but those in South America. There's an interesting site known as the Guanlin Temple, located near Luoyang in the Henan province. This site is steeped in history and reverence, primarily known as the Tomb and Memorial Complex for Guan Yu, a famous general in Chinese folklore and history. While the temple serves as a commemorative site, its architectural features and the age of some structures within the complex suggest a much older origin, potentially predating the commonly accepted historical timelines associated with the temple. Many believe the ancient Chinese used this structure as a tomb, the same way as the ancient Egyptians used various ancient sites in Egypt, although they were not their true architects as these sites were way too advanced for their bronze tools and knowledge. The tomb of the general, located in Jian Jilin province in China, is part of the Goguryeo tombs complex. This pyramid structure was most likely thousands of years older than the Goguryeo kingdom, which used the pyramid as a tomb, although they didn't construct it. The pyramid shape of the tomb of the general represents a unique architectural style in East Asia, distinct from the more rounded burial mounds commonly found in other parts of China and Korea. Curiously, this pyramid has a broad base that narrows towards the top, very similar to the Mesoamerican pyramids built by civilizations like the Aztecs and Mayans. The similarities are intriguing from a comparative perspective because their builders were believed to have developed independently on the opposite sides of the world. These similarities are not just superficial. They extend to the engineering techniques, the orientation and alignment with astronomical events, and the multi-tiered design that is characteristic of many pyramid structures around the world. The idea that such architectural and engineering concepts could span across continents and cultures suggests a potential exchange of knowledge or a common architectural lineage that has yet to be fully understood. Curiously, all across the world, there are ancient stories about mythical figures that visited our ancestors and gave them advanced knowledge and technology, kick-starting their civilization. In Mesopotamian mythology, the Apkalu were seven sages sent by the god Enki to teach humanity various arts of civilization, including writing, law, temple building, and agriculture. In Mesoamerican cultures, particularly among the Aztecs and Toltecs, there's Quetzalcoatl, a provider of agricultural knowledge who taught the ancient people the use of metalwork, the calendar, and the cultivation of maize. In Egyptian mythology, there was Thoth, a deity who gave the Egyptians writing in the form of hieroglyphics, together with various other advanced knowledge, boosting their civilization significantly. Many researchers like Graham Hancock believe these beings were survivors of an ancient cataclysm that destroyed the advanced civilization that constructed all of these massive megalithic monuments across the globe. These survivors then spread across the world and gave knowledge to the primitive hunter-gatherer societies. Interestingly, in Chinese mythology, we can find a similar figure. The Yellow Emperor, Wang Di, 
is a mythic figure in Chinese history that is often regarded as the progenitor of Chinese civilization. His contributions to the fabric of Chinese culture are immense, ranging from the creation of traditional Chinese medicine, including acupuncture, to the introduction of wooden houses, the bow and arrow, bronze coins, and a written language. The knowledge and technologies he gave to the ancient people were so immense that he became known as the founder of Chinese civilization. Comparing the Yellow Emperor with other civilizational bringers all across the world, one can discern a pattern where these figures are often credited with introducing critical advancements to society. All of this would essentially mean that the advanced megastructures found all across China were the works of a far more ancient civilization, a civilization lost to time and missing from our history books. One of the more controversial discoveries in China are the so-called Baigong Pipes. The enigma of Mount Baigong's mysterious pipes remains one of the unresolved mysteries of the past decade. In 1996, a research expedition found around two dozen pipes with diameters ranging from 1 to 50 inches, or 2 to 40 centimeters, embedded in the rock formations, suggesting an intricate man-made structure. These perplexing objects have sparked widespread media attention but have yet to be scrutinized by rigorous scientific study. Theories about their origins are abundant and varied, with suggestions ranging from an ancient water system to an advanced lake drainage mechanism. Chemical analysis of the pipes indicated a high content of iron oxide alongside significant amounts of silicon dioxide and calcium oxide. Remarkably, the artifacts were estimated to be over 5,000 years old, predating the known advent of iron smelting in China. Public information about the Baigong pipes emerged in June 2002 when a Chinese newspaper published an article claiming the discovery could challenge the entire narrative of human history. Following this, other publications sensationalized the pipes as remnants of technologically advanced structures, captivating public interest. During a search for dinosaur fossils near Mount Baigong, a group of American scientists encountered several caves containing more peculiar objects. Among these were two rusty iron pipes, each about 40 centimeters, approximately 16 inches, in diameter. One pipe seemed to stretch from the mountain's peak, into the cave, while the other descended from the cave's floor, suggesting they were part of an ancient system or mechanism. Of the three caves identified, two had collapsed, obscuring their contents. Later investigations in the area revealed additional pipes, approximately 12, with diameters ranging from 2 to 5 centimeters, roughly 1 to 2 inches, suggesting a complex and extensive network. Observers have noted that the pipes are complexly interconnected, suggesting their creators possessed highly advanced technology. These pipes were found near Lake Tosan, about 80 meters or 260 feet from Mount Baigong, with sizes ranging from a few centimeters to as thin as a few millimeters, similar to a toothpick. Some of these pipes were embedded in the lake's bottom or protruding above its surface. Despite their discovery, they have yet to attract significant scientific scrutiny and are seldom mentioned in academic circles. Among the conjectures is the idea that the pipes are part of an ancient water management system, possibly linked to a pyramid-like structure which is speculated to have stood 50 to 60 meters, or around 200 feet tall on the mountain, featuring triangular shafts and wells leading down its sides. This hypothetical pyramid is thought to have channeled water from Lake Tosan through the complex network of pipes. Serious discussion about the origins of the Baigong pipes necessitates a detailed chemical examination. One of the few to conduct such an analysis is Chinese scientist Liu Shaolin, who found that the pipes mainly consist of iron oxides, calcium, and silicon, with about 8% of the materials unidentified. 
Liu's research suggests that the pipes might be calcite formations or pseudomorphs, where minerals replace organic matter like wood roots over time, akin to the fossilization process. This theory is supported by atomic spectroscopy studies in 2003, which detected organic compounds and growth rings, indicating the pipes are natural formations, not artifacts of advanced technology. Despite these findings, the mystery deepened when, in 2007, the Chinese Seismological Bureau reported significant radioactivity in some pipes, adding another layer of intrigue. If the pipes are really natural formations, why would they have radioactive properties? The complete story of the Baigong pipes remains partially told, with their precise nature and origin still awaiting further exploration and scientific inquiry. Although it's most likely that the so-called pipes are actually just natural formations, created by ancient trees that fell down and were calcified and fossilized, we still know for certain that the Yangshan Quarry with its gigantic stone block, the cave networks carved with advanced technology, and all the hundreds of pyramids scattered across China are all man-made constructions. All of these megastructures alone are enough for us to conclude that there really was an advanced ancient civilization that resided in what is now China. Who this civilization was still remains a mystery. If you want to dive into a journey of advanced lost technology and sophisticated megastructures, you can watch our two-hour documentary on the pre-Egyptian artifacts and technologies, in which we explore several sites and pieces that we believe were built by a civilization far more sophisticated than the dynastic Egyptians. The link is in the top pinned comment.